Hey guys, this is Colby. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make the lower uh, abdomen armor for the clone trooper that we're currently working on. So let's get started. So for this video, we're going to be mainly using the front and side view of the image references that we have. So we have the front view here. On this angle, if you go to side view, pretty much just use this side of the uh, clone trooper. I've already shown how to do this in the first video of this series. So if you don't know how to set up these image references, you can go back and watch the first video. But other than that, so we're just going to continue forward and start modeling this piece here. Something that helped me make this piece was to basically have the chest armor and the back armor in position, pretty much where we need to be on the reference. So if you have those two set up, you can drag them right about here and match to your reference. So you can see here, it's a bit different than the actual reference because I've already edited the shape a bit to match my base mesh right here. So it's a bit different. You just kind of have to match the proportions of whatever you're basically matching to the character. So to get started with the modeling, we're going to basically start modeling from right about here. So I'm going to do shift to right click right about on that point. Or you can select the chest piece. So select the piece and then shift S. Uh, cursor to selected. After that, press shift A. Let's go to mesh. Let's go to plane. I rotate it 90 degrees on the x axis, so Rx90. Scale down through mouse, press S, and scale down. Remove it pretty much right about here. We're going to edit mode on the piece. So you press tab. And add an edge loop right down the middle to mirror the piece. Control R, add an edge loop. Left click twice. Uh, let's delete one of these faces here. So press 3 on the keyboard. Press one of these faces, press X to delete. Go back into object mode. And we're going to add a mirror modifier to the piece. So let's turn on clipping. And there we go. Uh, so now, basically just going to go into side view, match to the reference. So what helps to go into side view is you can press up here to switch references. Uh, you can press the Y button to go in the front, X to go into the right, or you can press three on the keyboard to go in the right view. And press 1 on your numpad uh, to go in the front view. So we just go into edit mode on the piece, grab this edge here, and it's going to move it downward. You can also move this side outward a bit to get a bit wider. And go into edge mode and do all this. So grab these edges and just kind of move them. Press G to go ahead and move all these edges here. Right, so now I'm going to go in the side view and match it to the reference. Move it back a bit here. So the arm is actually blocking the piece, so it's kind of hard to see. In this case, you just kind of have to guess, and that's why we have the front and chest armor uh, and the back armor to help us kind of guide the positions. So this should be pretty much like right about here. In relation to the chest armor, it should be right under the rib cage set. Uh, so now, let's go ahead and grab this edge on the right side. Let's move it back a little bit to add a little bit of a curve. Let's press E to extrude, and then Y. To move it back on the y axis, we'll move it right about here. And from here, we're just going to go and wrap around the side of the body. So you can grab this edge, press E to extrude, move it right about here, go to side view, and kind of move it back on the y axis. So you can use this tool here to grab the arrows. So grab the green arrow, move it back. Don't worry if it's too low poly. Uh, we'll fix this curves to match the overall shape in a bit, but for now we're just going to keep it low poly. Let's grab this edge, press E to extrude, move it back. Let me check right up back there is good. And so we're basically just going to keep doing this for the rest of the back. Uh, make sure that you have clipping on in the mirror modifier, so that way we can mirror across. So grab this edge, press E to extrude. Let's move it right about here. Go on the X arrow, the red arrow, and just press pretty much move it right about there. Press E to extrude again one more time. And that'll be to merge the uh, centers, or both sides to the center. Let's grab this and move it into position. This looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go back into object mode on the piece. Let's add a subdivision modifier to the piece. You can turn up the poly count to as much as you want. Let's increase viewport display and render. This might slow down the rendering time a bit. But if you're willing to uh, make it high poly, that's fine. So now we just need to fix these curves. Let's go back into edit mode. 
Let's add some edge loops. Scroll R, left click, drag your mouse pretty much right about here. I'm going to slide it across. Uh, basically drag the arrow here, move it under. You can also add another edge loop right about here, uh, here in the bits. But for now, we're just going to focus on the curves. I'm just kind of matching it to the reference here. Add another one right here. Just move it back a bit. That way, this one can move a bit more to the side. Here, yeah, we're just kind of moving everything into position here. You know, you want to fill out these gaps. Let's go ahead and do that. Just make sure there's no gaps under the piece. So, you may have to actually go out and Kind of grab some of these edges here, move them forward a bit. There we go. Uh, so, last couple of steps of this video. Uh, just go into edit mode on the piece, and we're going to start sharpening up everything. So, I'm going to sharpen up these corners here on this uh, front little piece here. Control R, right about there, and I want to back it back. Control R, just left click, and then drag it backward, and edge slide. And just make sure to fill in the gaps on the top. But now I'm going to go back into object mode and we're going to right click and shade smooth. And that looks pretty good. Uh, if you have any shading problems, you can maybe turn on this button here and go into normals and turn on auto smooth. It might fix your shading problems if you have any. But other than that, I hope you guys found Pretty much no shading problems. Uh, so now I'm just going to go into edit mode, or actually object mode, and add a modifier, uh, solidify, turn up the thickness of bits. And just add some thickness. That looks good. So we're basically done with this piece, uh, but now we're just going to go in and move it over to the base mesh. And in this case, I recommend uh, duplicating this piece just to have a backup in case you mess up the main one. But I'm going to move it over to my base mesh. This part is basically optional. You don't have to do it. But in this case, I'm just kind of showcasing these parts. So I'm going to scale this piece up. I already have one set up. It's right about there. Uh, so for this little piece here, I'll show you how to make this real quick. It's pretty easy. Uh, so for this piece, we're just going to create a cube. Shift A, mesh, let's create a cube. Let's move it back and scale down. So S, and then drag your mouse inward, move it back. In this case, we move it to right about here, but I'm just going to move it outward a bit. Press S, Y, make it skinnier on the Y axis. S, then Z, make it skinnier on the Z axis. And S and X, just make it a bit wider. Let's add a subdivision modifier to the piece. And set up the poly counts. Uh, so now we're just going to go into edit mode on the piece and basically add some sharper corners here. So control R, scroll up with your mouse wheel, left click, and we're going to press S and then X to make these wider from each other. Uh, make sure that this button here is set to median points, but not individual or origins. Uh, origins will just kind of mess it up a bit. It'll make it just individual. But just make sure it's set to median points. You do this. So S and X and make these wider. So now I'm just going to add a couple more edge loops, one on the top and one on the bottom. Let's control R, scroll up again. With these both selected, press S and then Z, move these up from each other. If you have one uh, that's not selected properly, say if you only have one selected, you can just do the same thing, just move up on the Z axis. And just drag it into position manually. Uh, if you don't know how to select edges, pretty much as all the way around, hold down Shift and Alt in edge mode. So press two on your keyboard, and then Shift and Alt and select an edge on the top or the bottom. It's up to you. Right, so now we want to basically grab this top edge here and move it down. I'm gonna grab these corners here and move them down as well. Just to make it a little bit more curved on the top. 
So there we go. You can also add a sharper, basically front and back. So say you want to add some edges right here, sharpen the corners, control R, scroll up again, press S and Y, and scale downward. So now you can go back to object mode and right click on the piece and shade smooth. So now you basically just move this piece into position on your back armor here, the abdomen armor, move it to right about here. Additionally, you can grab these set of edges here, hold on shift and alt, select the set of faces and move it outward or inward basically. Turn off proportional editing and just kind of drag this face inward. So this is a little extra step, but I figured I'd show this real quick. Uh, basically, if you have any problems where the part is clipping through the base mesh, just go into edit mode and tweak the shape a bit. So I'm here, I may have to drag it outward a bit. Just grab this edge and just move it inward, or outward a bit. Kind of move, remove the clipping problems. And hold on shift and alt and grab this set of top faces here. The top edges, so press 2, shift alt, and select this top edge. Now it's like all around. Press G and then Z, move it up. You can scale outward a bit to fix this gap. So in this case, my front and back armor pieces are kind of not hiding it very well. So I'm going to have to grab these a bit and move them inward a bit. to hide that little gap. There we go. Same for the back here. Uh, just, you can go into edit mode and tweak the positions of these faces. I recommend turning on proportional editing. You press O on your keyboard and just move these faces inward a bit. So there we go. One last thing before we end the video. So you can go to back into edit mode. I forgot to mention you should add two little like cuts basically in this piece or little holes that kind of go inward. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So you just add control R right about here. So say I want to select this space here, this space and this space. Hold down shifts, select both of these spaces and press E to extrude. Press E and then Y. I'm just going to move it inward a bit. And now we just need to add sharp, some uh, sharpness to the piece. Control R on the inside, right about there, and Control R here. So one on the inside and one on the outside. Now I'll add two little like holes into the piece that kind of move inward a bit. So there we go. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, but anyways, I hope y'all guys found this video useful, and see you guys next time.